And don't forget to order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths, an excellent book that you can find on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books available in both PDF as well as paperback form. For the Vikings in this ball game, they have to maximize the personnel that they have on offense, and that means getting the football in the hands of Jarek McKinnon a little bit more so this week as opposed to what they've done so far this season. He's a legit game breaker coming out of the backfield. Also on handoffs, find ways to put the football in his hands and allow him to do work. You also look at the cornerbacks going against this Packers receiving core. They can't get handsy in coverage like they were versus the Atlanta Falcons. The refs will call those penalties. A lot of illegal contacts, a lot of pass interferences, and you're going to put yourself in a bad position to make a play on the football. And they have to get off the field defensively. They struggled in that capacity last week versus Atlanta. They can't allow Green Bay to have long sustained drives. Otherwise, they're going to put themselves in a hole throughout the course of the ball game. And for Green Bay in this ball game, I would make it a track meet. They have the personnel to go three, four, sometimes empty sets. They also have the quarterback that can operate efficiently in a two-minute hurry-up style offense, and it will force the Vikings to adjust on the fly. And they have to win on the inside on both sides of the ball. You look at their offensive line and their defensive line having to bring their A game in order to slow down the Vikings' ground attack and also get pressure on Bridgewater. And speaking of pressure on Teddy Bridgewater, you want to flush him off the spot. Make him move around on that banged-up ankle, and that way he's not going to be as accurate he's not going to be as efficient and that way you can help yourself out as a defense The Minnesota Vikings passing game with rookie quarterback Teddy Bridgewater has to get on track very early in this matchup. I'm going to show you one play they can utilize where spacing can cause problems for a defense. Show you what I'm talking about here. What we have here is a bunch set, a cluster set. You have one, two, three receivers on one side where the spacing on the back side where we're going to put Greg Jennings here on the backside creates almost a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. It forces this corner to widen out to where this free safety is going to either have to split the the uh, the space or try to align himself close to where the numbers are. So it puts these two guys in a bind. We'll explain that in a second. So here, what we're going to do is get creative. We're going to put Marquise Gray back here in the backfield as well. Love his athleticism. We're also going to put Cordero Patterson. So now you don't know if this is an end around or some type of play where you're trying to get him running back across the formation. But what we're really trying to do is get his speed down the sideline on a rail route as well. So what we're going to do with these two tight ends, right off the bat, we're going to bring this guy here on a, on a hang route, which means he's going to hang right over the center, essentially a dump off, trying to hold those middle linebackers at bay. Now on the back side, we have a short dig or a short in route, like a 10 to 12 yard in route with Greg Jennings. This is essentially your hot read as well, because again, Bridgewater's alignment uh, where the alignment of the offense is and Bridgewater can come backside where the space is. He has all types of room and a big passing window to complete this pass to Greg Jennings. Now, here's the creative part, what we're going to do with Marquise Gray and also Cordero Patterson. We're going to bring Gray up and over to the post, trying to pull one of these safeties away because we're running Cordero Patterson down the rail. Running back takes a short step, and this is the interesting part about Teddy Bridgewater. He doesn't take a full three-step or five-step drop. It's a quick turnaround setup. So it's almost as if he's trying to hurry up and hit this, this short in route right here. But really, he wants to go deep down the field to Cordero Patterson because he's going to be running away from coverage, running either one-on-one -on -one or past the zone. He has that speed. And now you have the built-in check down with your, your uh, hang route. And you have the post to take away the safety. So you see where his setup and the alignment of the cluster on one side the space on the other side gives you options and creates big passing windows for a young quarterback. This week versus the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers will be facing a young rookie quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater who's also talented, but you also can have some opportunities to put him in a bad situation by switching up your coverages on a fly. I'm going to show you an example right here. What we're showing pre-snap is cover three. So Teddy Bridgewater is going to see, oh, this is cover three. I know where I have to go with the football, but really it's cover zero. We're not going to have anybody back deep. And what we're going to do, we're going to send a strong safety as well. So coming off the edge, we're sending a guy, boom, we're sending a backer off the edge. Those are your contained blitzes. You want to put speed on the outside in case Bridgewater wants to get outside the pocket. He'll run right into the waiting arms of an outside linebacker. And backers are able to chase quarterbacks as opposed to defensive linemen. Now, what we're doing creative up front we're also not going to send the five techniques because, again, we sent the outside backers. Their job is to hold court at the line of scrimmage and play contain in case, you know, 
Bridgewater wants to get outside as well. You do have guys as your five techniques getting contained. And now we're gonna send double A gap pressure. We're gonna take this nose tackle. He's gonna crawl space at a guard and go right into the B gap. And we're sending dual A gap pressure with the Mike backers. That is always the case where you want the quarterback to get rid of the football quickly. We're manned up on the corners, like I said, cover zero. So as the cadence starts to wind down, you're gonna see the strong safety creep up and boom, he's shooting that B gap. You're gonna see this free safety walk over and now he's manned up one-on-one -on, -one on the tight end. So again, cover three looks like pre-snap, but really it's cover zero. And you're all you're trying to do is force Teddy Bridgewater to make a quick and inaccurate decision. And you wanna to try to get him on the ground by sending speed his way, strong safety, and all four backers while holding your defensive lineman at bay. So that's one way this week versus Minnesota, the Packers can find ways to frustrate Teddy Bridgewater. You want to talk about a guy that's hitting his stride as a rookie. You look at Vikings linebacker Anthony Barr. This is a guy that's versatile enough to be moved around the formation, can get after the quarterback, can drop back in coverage. So whether it's versus the run or versus the pass, I think he's going to be the biggest X factor in this game for Minnesota. And the biggest X factor for the Packers will be their interior offensive line. Right now, the Vikings interior defensive front, those two defensive tackles are doing a great job in clogging up running lanes. And we know right now the Packers are having issues in running the football. It will go a long way in allowing this offense to have balance if those guys up front, guard to guard, can have success. I like the Packers in this ball game. When you look at their receiving core, being able to spread the field and expand that defense and win those individual matchups, that's going to be the biggest reason why they knock off the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think the Vikings have enough capable corners in the secondary to match up versus Green Bay. So look for the Packers to win this one versus Minnesota at home. What's up, fantasy football fans? I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. For all of your starts, sits, fantasy football notes, news, and tidbits, Tune into our podcast, Football Game Plan Starting Lineup, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on our Football Game Plan Radio Network, which is located at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan. And don't forget to check out Football Game Plan's NFL Wraparound live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan, where we give you all of our late minute and last minute notes, news and tidbits and thoughts on each and every game on the NFL schedule. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Packer fan forums and Viking fan forums for always showing football game plan support.